There's loads of times when I got ripped to fucking shreds for some shit I've done. Mm. And I think it makes you sometimes a stronger person. And I think it, if you're missing out that, when you do come across any bad times in your life, you've got no tools to deal with it. Does that make sense? Mm. You've got no tools to deal with it. You know, if you're, if you're in this protective bubble, and I talk about this with my wife all the time with, with my son, I think he's got such a lovely life, yeah? And he has amazing life, right? But if later on in life, something bad happens to him, you know, something really shit happens to him, yeah. Has he got any tools at all to right. deal with it? You know, I had loads of stuff growing up, got beat up, got done this, done that, right. you know, all that right. type of stuff throughout my life. And then when something bad happens, and it still will happen, life's shit at times mm. and life's good at times. You know, it, it's always up and down. It never stays the same, especially as an adult. Mm -hmm. But what, how is he going to deal with that sort of stuff? And how is your son going to deal with And your son, you know, because mm. we all want the best for them. But sometimes is giving them the best, mm. are they long-term, we're just making them soft. <laughs> Are we just making them soft and then they're not able to deal with problems? And then they go, ah, oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm depressed. Yeah. I'm depressed. But not because they're actually depressed, but because they haven't got the tools to deal with right. it. Right. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a really good point. I, I think I agree, mate. Yeah. I had this conversation with my wife the other day, right? We've just started letting our son go out and hang around and, and with his mates on the weekends and go walking out of where we can see him, like around Plimstock and stuff like that. And the first day we did it, it started pissing it down with rain, right? And she's like, oh, let's, let's go. Because they got phones now, right? Oh, just ring him and, and go pick him up. I'm like, no. So what's the worst that's going to happen? If he's smart, he'll find shelter, right? Like we did when we were kids. And what's the worst that's going to happen? He'll get wet, get a cold, get a sniffle, be sick. So what? Yeah. He'll, he'll learn from that. And that's, this, that's not really adversity, right? But it's a little taste of it. So I'm like, no, we'll just leave him. Let, he'll figure it out for himself. Worst case, he's going to go home tonight. He's going to have a warm shower, a warm bed, a warm meal, and a roof over his head. Like you couldn't ask for any more than that, no, you know. Yeah. So you got to let. I'm, we're kind of trying to drip feed him yeah. little bits because he goes to big school in September. And that's going to make or break him, I think. Yeah, yeah one of my mates, he's uh, he's got a stepson who um, I think is I don't know maybe fourteen now. And I was laughing the other day, I was chatting to him because he said that literally for about six months before his kid went to big school, he, uh, he'd, he'd been his like stepdad for years. So it's his, you know, essentially his son. Um, but he said he, he put him just through the meal with banter and teasing, mm -hmm. just butchered him for about six months yep. because he's, you know, he's, he's quite witty, my mate. And he was like, if this kid goes to school and he can't handle a bit of banter, mm -hmm. it's just going to ruin him. Yeah, Jack's, yeah. Jack's had that for 10, 11 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fine, He's yeah, fucking mate. ready. <laughs> I do it too. Yeah. And I'm not precious about swearing around my kids yeah. or anything like that. Like, and if they if they piss me off, I will shout at them because they need to know. They need to know where the line is and that you can't just go around being rude and disrespectful to people and expect them to go, you know, I, I remember sitting in I'm a, a stickler for manners. I don't know about you. Yeah. If my boy, if, it, if he met either of you and he didn't, you know, yeah. didn't use his manners, that, that straight away I'm on it. You know, I'm yeah. like, please, thank you. You know, and if he didn't mm. do it, I'd tell him. Yeah, I was, I was in a service station once, right? Sat down having lunch and uh, this bloke's there with his son and the wife gets up and, and walks off and the son, probably about, I don't know, five, maybe six, Maybe, maybe a bit younger than that. Got this chair, pushed it across the floor and it's going. So the dad's like, I can't remember his name, just say Jack. Don't do that, Jack. The kid looks at him, pushes the chair. He's like, come on, Jack, let's have a chat about this. And I'm watching it. And this bloke, <laughs> this bloke was negotiating with his child. And I'm like, you need to pick that kid up, right? Slap it. Well, you, don't have to slap it. <laughs> you need to discipline your kid in front of all these people, right? To show them that you're not scared to. I remember when one of my kids had a meltdown in, I think it was Morrison's or something. So I had a meltdown as well. I'm like, I don't give a shit. People look at me, they look at me anyway. So you're going to cry, I'm going to cry. Like yeah. negotiating with like a four or five year old. I'm like, you don't negotiate. Yeah, I have this battle with my other half all the time with our kid because she's, you know, a typical mother, like just lets him get away with murder. But even stuff, like I, I raised my voice to him and she, we had a bit of a ding dong about this back in the day because she was like, you just can't scream and shout at people. I said, first, I'm not screaming and shouting. I'm just mm. raising my voice. Mm. Secondly, he doesn't understand English. He's two. Right. So you can't have a discussion with him. Right. You've got to give him the tone. Yeah, the tone. Uh, yeah. And yeah. he's got to understand. And I said, he can go for his whole life. Everyone ever shouts at him. The moment he gets to school and someone shouts at him, to your point, he'll just have a meltdown. Mm. Um, so, so yeah, I think you need, you need to, but also just, I think, standing your ground with kids as well. Mm. Whereas... 
you know, we all, I don't know, first toys on the floor. And I'm like, pick them up. And he'll be like, no. And I'm mm -hmm. like, pick them up. Mm. We'll stay as long as you need to, mate. We're not leaving until you pick them up. Mummy can do it. No, mummy's not doing it. You pick them up. And we'll have a standoff for half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a, you know, that's a long time. He's only three. To me, it's not. It's a drop in the ocean. And yeah. I'll stand there until it's done. And eventually now, he's he listens. Mm. But still... With me, he'll be good as gold. Mum walks in, starts being a whiny little brat. Okay, right. So you can still see the difference between letting him get away with it and not letting him go with it. Yeah. So yeah, I think it really makes yeah. sense. It's a difficult road to navigate. Yeah. You know, being being a father. There's no, there's no right or wrong, really. Though, is there? With no. stuff like you know, you, you look at it and you think, oh, I'm doing it the right way. I think only time tells with that when they mm. when they grow up and they become adults.